What drove me to environmental studies was just that I was always really interested in the ocean when I was growing up and really interested in the biology of that. And so when I came here, I thought I was going to be a marine biologist. I started studying biology, realized I wasn't that interested in that, so I actually took um, a class by Professor Wargo, Environmental Politics and Law, and I absolutely loved it. Like, I was really interested in nuclear fallout originally, um, and just the effects it had on health. They tested a lot in the Marshall Islands. The scientists weren't aware while they were doing the testing of what the effects of nuclear fallout were, and strontium-90, and where it went, and what it would do to the body. After they'd done all the testing, they had realized that it was causing cancer, and um, it was in the ground so they couldn't get rid of it. And politicians at the time tried to hide it from the American public and they kept moving the people from Marshall Islands to different islands to try and save them, quote unquote, but um, they couldn't. Um, but they still kept doing testing in Nevada and in different areas of the US. It's easy to convince people to save people's lives when like cancer and health is so obvious and I mean scary to us it's much easier to convince someone to do that than if you just you just tell someone hey we have this campaign for an environmental issue that you know what, it is proven by science but the environmental is such a long-term thing whereas health is very uh, very short-term and it's easier to measure the present value of something rather than a future value Science is very scientific and very difficult for people to understand if they don't know science and they don't know the terminology. And that's, I think, the biggest difference between the two things is people would maybe be able to correlate it to their everyday lives if they understood what people were saying. But I mean, if people are just throwing out Latin terms at you, you have no idea what's happening and it's hard, it's hard to care. I mean, for my sport in particular, it's hard to make the argument just because we're inside and it's a very controlled environment. But I mean, just training over the summers and everything, it like you can really tell the difference when you're in a smoggier area or even just in New York City. Like you can tell the difference when you're running or, or lifting. You get a lot more tired easier. When I go up north in Canada, um, the air's a lot cleaner and you can just breathe so much easier. And when I go on runs there, I can run a lot further and it actually is a big difference and I actually ran in Calgary too and even though there, you're a lot higher um, so it should be harder it wasn't it wasn't necessarily harder because the air is so much cleaner people find health such a strong priority that if like people might not be interested in climate change as much they're like oh I don't really care if it's a little warmer that might be nice it's a lot more difficult for people to understand how those things are going to affect them because it's not a direct impact on them. I think targeting teams is a great way to do it just because, I mean, our whole team does Relay for Life and the Mandy Schwartz campaign every single year and maybe not everyone wants to do it, but if you get a big enough group wanting to do it, the entire team is going to do it. We have a greater impact than we believe and um, there's a lot to be learned about the environment and that our actions have a much greater impact than we think. And even if it's an individual at a time, it's, it's the only thing we can do. And I think we, that once one or two people start doing it, that will become an exponential function too and more and more people will start joining the movement. So um, individually, we just start after doing our part. Mm -hmm.